to see you all out today on this now very brisk <laughs> December morning. We're glad to have you worshiping with us. Just a couple reminders. Don't forget, you can order your poinsettias, and you can order Heifer Project, um, get an animal and an honor of someone. It's a great Christmas gift. So um, those things are happening out in the foyer, so you can assist with that. And... Uh, those are all the announcements we have for this week is, of course, the big event going on this week is love packages and Christmas for kids. Everything is uh, coming back on Thursday for Christmas for kids and Friday packing for love packages. And then Saturday is the big delivery. So if you're helping with that, just remind yourself it's this week. And so get everything in. So that's a wonderful event going on. And we have, um, I'll update the military during our time of joys and concerns. And here's the birthday list. Happy birthday, everybody having birthdays this week. A couple today, happy birthday to them. And happy anniversary. If you're having a December anniversary, happy anniversary to you. God is good, friends. And all the time, let's worship and praise our great God. Let's prepare our hearts.
Amen. Thank you, Ellie. And as we begin today, we're going to watch a little video um, from Czech Nose Church on the Advent wreath. So let's watch that next. Styrofoam circle with just a sprig of holly or a large ornate brass stand with tall strapping candles like this gentleman right here. Congregations today are marking the four Sundays of Advent with the lighting of candles. So just what does it all mean you ask? Well I'm going to tell you if you let me I say. We're going to take a look at the Advent wreath on this episode of Chuck Knows Church. The season of Advent always includes the four Sundays before Christmas. It's a time of waiting as we prepare our hearts and lives for the coming of the Christ child. And using the Advent wreath and its candles is a way that many are celebrating Advent at church and in the home. Now, there are usually four purple or blue candles on a circular wreath showing the four weeks of Advent with a white candle right at the center called the Christ candle. Now, often families or members of the congregation help mark the four Sundays of Advent by lighting the candles. Look at that. You know, I remember my parents always let my older brother help light the candles, but uh, I never got the chance to. Might have had something to do with The Towering Inferno being my favorite movie. Anyway, on the first Sunday, lighting the first purple candle signifies hope, because Advent is a time of waiting and hoping. On the second Sunday, the first candle is relit, followed by a second purple candle, the candle of love. On the third Sunday of Advent, after the first two purple candles, the third candle lit is sometimes pink instead, signifying joy. And on the fourth Sunday, we light the candle of peace. Now there can be scriptures or words spoken reflecting each of the Advent messages, you know, hope, love, joy, peace. Then on Christmas Day, after the lighting of the four candles, the Christ candle in the center is finally lit, celebrating that the wait is over and the Christ child is born. And you know what? Sometimes just lighting the Christ candle without any words is more than enough. That's the Advent wreath. If you want to hear more about it, ask your pastor. Uh, tell him Chuck sent you. And now we will invite the Mark Christensen family to come up and light our Advent wreath. Good morning. No, please back up. Today we light the Advent candles of hope and love. We love because God first loved us. Love looks different than we might expect. Love is reflected in a mother's gaze at her child, even when they might be disagreeable. Love is reflected in the faithful partner who lovingly wipes the face of their beloved who can no longer care for themselves. Love is reflected in the friends who stand beside us, even when we don't agree. Love is God's gift to us in Jesus. For while we were sinners, Christ died for us. We light our first candle to proclaim our hope is in the Lord. He is our righteousness. We light our second candle in the truth God's great love is for us. Okay, let us pray. God of the Advent, we come this morning looking for signs, signs of love, signs of hope, signs of mercy. You promise to give us new heart and a new spirit when we open our lives to your transforming love. May we do so this day. In the name of the love, which is Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
And I'll just take this opportunity to say what a fun time we had with the Christensen family last night at the Christmas parade. Mark drove our bus, and uh, Jennifer had the scouts in front of us, and my husband and I walked the parade, or I should say ran the parade. Okay, people, this is the fastest parade I've ever walked or been around. (laughs) And then I heard the history that it used to be the slowest parade, and so I know the pendulum swings. (laughs) I hope I will try to swing it in the middle. (laughs) I have no influence. (laughs) It's good for me, I know. Beautiful night. We had a great time, but thank you very much. The bus looked great, and they did a great job with that. Well, let's stand together, friends, and sing our opening Christmas carol, Angels from the Realms of Glory. We'll be singing verses 1 and 4. From the realms of glory, wing your flight o'er all the earth, wing your flight on all the earth, the Messiah of earth. Come and worship, come and worship. Now we'll invite the children and youth back up, and Stacy will be here with us. Good morning. Sit right here, guys. Sit, sit on the side. Sorry, Stacy. They will not sit where you want oh, them to. Okay. <laughs> Must be boys. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> we live by grace, so that's okay. How are you? Hi. <laughs> That's okay. He was helpful earlier, so that's wonderful. Okay, I have a question. I always have a question. So what can we do to get ready for somebody special to come and visit you? What are some things that you could do? Clean. Clean clean your house. Okay, that's not a fun one, but yes, that's a good one. Okay, what else? What else could we do to get ready, to prepare for somebody super special to come to your house? What else do you think, Carter? It's like a birthday. You can maybe pull out games to play. Okay, pull out some games to play. Games like Uno. Okay, pull out your favorite games. All right, that's good. Well, those are all wonderful ideas. And I have something in my bag. Now, a few minutes ago, before church started, I was talking to Matt. And I noticed that RJ was standing up here reading my script. I'm like, did you look in my bag? He said, no, I only read the script. Okay. (laughs) So he was preparing. So what do you think I have in here? All right, you want to feel the bag? More scripts? Nope, no more. Markers. Markers? Yeah, there is a couple extra markers in there. But All right, feel this part. What do you think? Oh, it feels like a weight. It feels like a weight? Hmm. Well, let's see what it is. You're right, there are some markers. That's just because they didn't come out. Well, all right, this is my red carpet. Okay, now it's actually material, it's not carpet, but it's my red carpet. It is fabric, you are correct. So, it did say red carpet on the script. Yes. So, when would we use a red carpet? Carter, when would we use? 
for a king. Okay? RJ, what else would we use a, a red carpet? You might put it in. Boy, that'd be really special, wouldn't it? Have you ever put out your red carpet and invited guests to come? Maybe try that. Okay? So, RJ, I need your help. Can you roll out the red carpet for me? Okay. All right. Roll it out this way. It's a sh Okay, that's good. All right. So... What would happen with our, with our special guest? What would they do? All right. Come back up. All right, RJ, take your turn, too. Thanks. You want to walk on the red carpet? Go ahead. It's okay. We want to do that. Oh, Carter, RJ, you're so excited. All right. Now, hold on. So, this red carpet would be put out for important people. Like you. Like kings and celebrities and popes and people, leaders of the world. But are any of those people, they're important, but are any of those people God? And no. No. So do you know that in all of history, there is really only one person who deserves the red carpet treatment? Mm -hmm. Who do you think that is? Jesus or God? Jesus. You are exactly oh, correct. And Jesus is part of God. So in Luke chapter 3, we hear about John, who's actually Jesus' cousin. And John was kind of the wild one, and he ate the locusts and the honey, and he wore kind of the furry clothes. And he went around to people saying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. And he asked people to change their hearts to get ready for Jesus. He didn't say, go roll out the red carpet. But he did say something even more important. He said for them to get their hearts ready to receive Jesus. He wanted to make them, he wanted to make sure that when Jesus started his preaching and teaching and healing, that they would recognize that he was God's only son and sent to save them from their sin. So our carpet is red like a heart, like a heart to remind us of love of Jesus' great love for us, and to help us think about getting our hearts ready to love Jesus back. Have you ever thought about preparing your heart for Jesus? Maybe you can picture rolling out a red carpet in your mind and saying, Jesus, you are the most important thing in my life. It's not about the glitter the lights and the glow, it's not about the presence and the bow. It's about you, Jesus, and how much you love me. And I want to return that love by making you first in my life. If we each did that, our Advent season would be a lot better. Thanks, Carter. Thank you, sweetie. Awesome. What great help. Let's say a prayer. Don't run away yet. We didn't pray. All right. Dear God, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. For your gift of love. For your gift of love. That came as Jesus. That came as Jesus. Help us prepare our hearts. Help us prepare our hearts. To make Jesus number one. To make Jesus number one. In our lives. In our lives. Amen. 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 <laughs> Well, one way we show that Jesus is number one in our lives is through our offering. And so with love for God and one another in our hearts, let's with joy and thanksgiving prepare to present our tithes and offerings to the Lord at this time. I'd invite you to fill out your attendance registers as uh, you're preparing for worship. So let's prepare our hearts and we'll invite the ushers and their helpers to come forward at this time.
Loving and gracious Heavenly Father, <clears throat> we thank you for this opportunity to gather and to worship, to experience your love anew at Christmas especially. We ask, O oh Lord, during this season of Advent as we are awaiting your coming, that we may make a special effort to be more loving, to love you and to love others. And one way we show our love to you, O oh Lord, is through our material possessions. And so we ask that you accept these tithes and offerings and those who are giving online and in other ways, that you multiply them and that you help us in our love to further your kingdom here on earth. We praise you in the name of love, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Our next Christmas carol is What Child Is This? And we'll sing all three verses. Oh, no. 
story we're going to share today is from Matthew chapter 1. It's Joseph's part in the story, um, and it's Matthew's account of how Jesus was born. So let's share these uh, words together. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her fiancé, was a good man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child, she will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife, but he did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born. And Joseph named him Jesus. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to our great God. Well, how many of you know what an influencer is? I'm sure you might have heard that word. This is common in language right now. It's mostly about online activity, about people who are influencing the culture in many different ways. And often they're rated on their influence by their number of followers. And so if you have, you know, 1.5 million followers, you're considered an influencer. And uh, you might have less followers, but there's many different people that are considered influencers out there. And that's our theme this year uh, for Christmas, for our Advent season as we prepare for Christmas. We are to be influencers. And the first week we talked about with our first candle that we are to be influencers of hope. That we are to be hope-filled people and that we are then to influence the world by our hope. And how we do that is by reaching out to God to claim what we do not yet have but we know is coming, which is Jesus. And in that language that I'm using there, it's not that we don't have Jesus in our hearts, is that Jesus is not with us uh, physically anymore because he ascended into heaven, but that we live as if he is very dominant in our lives, the most dominant thing. And so that's how we start our influencing, by reaching out to God. And of course, God is right there reaching out to us. And then we influence other people by how we live. We influence them by if we're hope-filled people, or are we fretters? Are you a hand-wringer, as they used to call it? Do you, do you get nervous and, and anxious? And I used to be able to always say, now, anxiety is not something I struggle with, but anymore I do struggle with anxiety, and it's, it's, a, it's an annoyance to myself and my pride. <laughs> when you've not been an anxious person and all of a sudden you, you have to combat anxiety, it can be hard. And so I'm more sympathetic even more than I was before to people who struggle with anxiety because it's very hard. But hopeful people live in confidence, not because we see what we have, but because we believe in what we do not see and we know is coming. And so hope can give you confidence, and that can help with your anxiety. And when we reach out to others with our hope, then that can help quench their anxiety when we share the good news of Jesus with them in many different ways, that can encourage them. And so Jesus is the Savior of the world, and that looks so different for each person on how you might need to be saved. Maybe you need to be saved from anxiety, but there might be other things that we need to be saved for. 
And Joseph was told in the dream, as we just read, that that's what Jesus' name would be. And then uh, later, through the prophet Isaiah, his name also is Emmanuel, which means God with us. And as we reach out to others, we can ensure them God is with us, uh, no matter what the circumstances are. And so that's our first challenge of Advent as we're preparing for Christmas and any time throughout the year to be people of hope and to work at being hopeful. And then our second candle, of course, is to be loving people and influencers of love in our world. We should live in such a way that others know that they are loved by us and by God. Do you live in such a way that people know you love them, firstly? And do you live in such a way that people know God loves them? That's the extra challenge. And of course, to be able to do that, we have to feel loved by God ourselves. We have to saturate ourselves in God's great love for us in Jesus. And we have to live in the steadfast love of the Lord. And what does steadfast mean? Well, steadfast to me means that you're loved even when you aren't at your best. Not just when you are at your best, but when you aren't at your best. You are loved when you are not making the best choices, maybe. You are loved when even you're at your worst. God is still loving us. That's his promise, because what does scripture say? While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Not while we were angelic. Not while we were perfect. Not while things were all going our way. Not when we were on our Sunday best. No, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, proving God's love for us. So steadfast love means that we love people at their worst, which is hard. It's hard enough to love people when they're at their best for me some days, but when they're at their worst, that's really hard. And so we really, if we're going to be influencers for love, we really need to fill our hearts with love. One of the passages in scripture that often reminds us of love is 1 Corinthians 13. In fact, it's often called the chapter of love. But if you look at the Bible, you know that the Bible is a love story from beginning to end. It's all about God loving people and people loving God and others and not being also. It's all often about us not being loving <laughs> and our ways we fail to love. And a passage that offers some practical applications to love, in addition to 1 Corinthians 13, is Romans chapter 12. And if you're reading our daily devotions, you know that they, he refers to some of that, and he has a study book on it. And chapter 12 of Romans does have some very practical helps on how to love others. And it begins with verse 9 saying this, don't just pretend to love others. Hmm. Don't just pretend. But I'd say that it says really love them. I'd say, though, if you're having trouble loving someone, you might have to pretend for a while. And then you might learn to love them. But don't just pretend, it says. Really love them. Hate what is wrong and hold tightly to what is good. Love with genuine affection. Take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope. And of course, that's in Jesus Christ. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. A big influencer in the Christmas story is Joseph, the man we hear so little about throughout the whole Christmas narrative. Joseph is a big influencer of love in the Christmas story. His life reflects many of those attributes in Romans chapter 12. He really loved others. He really loved Mary. He really tried to love her unborn child, and he really loved his God. And Joseph was hardworking, and he served faithfully. He knew with confidence that he was one of God's chosen people. He didn't, he didn't have lack of faith. He had hope. And he, he was patient in his troubles. As we see, he kept on praying when he received what would be hard news. 
It would be hard news to receive what Joseph heard. Even in today's world, it would really be shockingly hard. Because remember, Jesus hadn't been born yet. Joseph did not have Christian faith. Joseph was a good Jewish man. His faith was based on the Jewish religion, which is the foundation of our Christian faith. And so Joseph did a good job in showing love. And I say, good job, Joseph. And I also say, no wonder Mary wanted to marry him. He was a good guy. She picked well. <laughs> and many of you have done the same. It's so important to have good men in our lives. And I would ask you this to chew on. It just kind of came to me. And I, you know, I've been a minister for 30 years. I've been a Christian for longer than that. I've read the Christmas story, I believe, every day of my life, practically. I've, not every day of my life, but every year I've heard the Christmas story. And, and I know it well. And I, this year, it just reflected, I just got thinking about Joseph so much. And I realized, you know, sometimes I wonder, why was Mary chosen? You know, why was she picked? She obviously was a nice person and all that. But why, why Mary? There were many virgins in the, in the Jewish culture at that time. So why was Mary picked? And I think Mary was picked because of Joseph. Because it was going to be a team effort. She wasn't going to be able to do it without him. And so God picked her because she, they had picked each other. And really, maybe God picked him first and, and encouraged him. And so Joseph is a big influencer in the love. And I believe he's a big influencer in Jesus' life in learning how to love. Because who does Jesus learn love from first on what a heavenly father is, on what our heavenly fathers love like, if not his earthly father? So as you seek to shine the light of hope and the light of love out into the world this week, follow the example of Joseph a witness of steadfast love and endurance. And how was he loving? What did he do that was loving? Well, one thing, he was attentive to his faith. And that's one thing I hope you work on being this Christmas season. Attend to your faith. You know, never forget, Joseph was confident. We don't see any hesitation that he believed he was a child of God that he knew God loved him and was listening to him because he kept praying and he kept considering it. And so that's one thing that we all need to do is really be tight in our confidence that we are loved by God. And that helps us share love with others. Now, we've been through a terrible time. This pandemic has been horrible and it doesn't ever seem to end. New variant, new variant, new variant. Ugh. Enough, and it's really weighing on families. We, we have seen that in our own personal extended families. Stress about this that we hadn't seen, or we kind of, I guess we kind of been dancing around before. And you know, if you're not a person who likes conflict, hello, even me, I like a good debate, but I don't like conflict about it. I don't want to be fighting about it. I'm sick of fighting about it. You might be one of those people who are just like, enough. You know, enough. And, and the enemy really loves creating these kind of environments. The enemy really loves this. He really likes for us to think, if we can't make sense of this, then, and, then we, might, we might feel like we can't make sense of anything. Have you ever felt that way? I can't make sense of this, so now I don't understand anything at all. And that's how I was feeling this week especially especially on, after Tuesday shooting in Michigan. I was like, I can't make sense of this, and I can't understand it, and I, I, so it just breaks my heart. And, and, you know, I'm not personally involved with anyone there, but, but it's a, and, and I could see that the Christmas story ties this in because, you know, Joseph was a man of faith, and he couldn't understand what was going on either. How could someone that he had been betrothed to, and in the Jewish faith, that was serious. I mean, he picked someone. He was a righteous man, the Bible tells us. So he was looking for a righteous woman, and he had picked one. He was attentive to his faith. And so he chose this young woman, and he had treated her with respect and honor, and now she shows up pregnant. That would be so painful and confusing to me. I mean, how could she do that? 
And then, uh, you know, she seemed to be the kind of person that had faith herself and yet, and honorable, and yet here she is. And, and I mean, she seemed naive in the ways of the world in many ways, because remember, she asked the angel, How, how's this going to happen? She didn't know. And here it has happened to Joseph. And he probably wonders what he was really struggling, what really did happen. I mean, this angel story, it's a little out there. And he was probably trying to figure out what to do, just like we do. What should we do? And he did what he knew to do. He attended his faith. He practiced his faith. He was kind. He was trying to be compassionate. He was trying to think about, how can I be most loving? What's the best choice for me? What is the best choice for Mary and this unborn child? What am I to do? I mean, he had been praying about it and thinking about it. He was a righteous person. And, you know, that's difficult in a situation like this. And he was probably practicing his faith like good Jewish people do. He was righteous, so that means what? He prayed in the morning when he first got up. He prayed mid-morning. He prayed at noon. He prayed in the late afternoon. He prayed over his meals, I'm sure. He prayed before he went to bed. I mean, he was a person of prayer. So that's a model for us. What should we do when we can't understand things? Pray and pray some more. And pray some more. Pray and pray some more. Be present in your life, be attentive to your faith, and see what happens. Be an influencer for good. I believe that Joseph influenced Jesus. I just love this picture. Because the baby's not looking at the mother, and we know how impactful mothers are, but the baby's looking at the dad. Men, you're important. You are so important to your families and so important to our world. You have great power to influence all of us in good and powerful ways. And Joseph is our example. He changed the world for good because he was willing to listen to a dream. That's how much he was stressing about it. You know, have you ever had dreams about things you're stressing about? He was praying and so upset about this. And he could have let this, he could have let this thing turn his life for bad. Because we do, don't we? Some things become our God. We let grief, we let pain, we let other things take such a big role in our lives. And it's not that they're not huge. I get it, they're huge. But they're not God. And Joseph could have let this betrayal, he could have seen it as a betrayal. He could have said, that's just a dream. Are you crazy? I'm not believing and listening to a dream. But instead... He didn't. He was a person of faith. He trusted God was speaking to him. He believed him when he said it, and he honored that. And because of that, I believe Jesus learned firsthand what a loving, committed father is really like. So then when he became into himself as the son of God, because he was just a baby, he didn't know then that he knew what our loving father was like. And then he could boldly tell us, God is so loving, we can call him Abba, Father. So I invite you during this Christmas season right now as we're preparing to take communion, you at home, get your elements out and get ready. And you here, prepare your hearts and get ready to attend to your faith by taking in the body and blood of that baby born so long ago. By being influenced by his great love for us, so that we can do powerful things out into the world through his love. So influence, let God influence you, so that you, you, yes you, can go out and influence this world, because many people have, and we will, as God's people. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> We come to our time of prayer, and I want to lift up some folks before we take communion. I just want to say with joy that um, we really need to be praying um, for Donnie. Um, he is going to um, be having his last weeks of training as a Marine, and it's really tough. So crank out the prayers for Donnie, and we'll put that in the announcements next week. And um, so, and the uh, the 
Byer family, the boys, the Byer boys are back in Dwight right now waiting for their next assignment, so keep them in your prayers. And we especially want to crank out the prayers for Alan Hoffman. And he wanted me to be praying for his doctor, so I invite you to pray for his doctor too, Dr. Franza. I warned Alan, my prayers are not always effective that way because when I've prayed for doctors, often then when I talk to them, they're like, yeah, we had an emergency call at 2 a.m. or whatever. That wasn't my plan. My plan was well-rested and waking up. So, But pray for Dr. Franza, for him to be well-rested and have on, on the 9th, which is Alan's surgery. So be praying for his whole family and especially for Alan. Um, and pray for uh, Jan Graham um, in the office. She has to be up in Wisconsin. She's there now helping with a nephew who had an odd tick bite and had a bad reaction to that. Very, it was not Lyme's disease, so it was another bad disease that ticks can give you. So just keep praying for him. Continue to pray for Dave Nelson and others that are recovering um, from health issues and still dealing with health problems. So keep all these folks in your prayers um, as we go to God at this time. Let's pray together. Lord, we are so thankful that you influence our lives for good through your Son and through the power of your Holy Spirit. And just right now, as we're preparing ourselves to take communion, we ask that as you examine our hearts, that you cleanse us, O Lord, and redeem us, remove our sin, and anything that causes us to stumble, our confusion that the devil tries to lay on us, that if we can't understand all things, then we can't understand anything. And that's not true. We understand this, that you are our God, and nothing is impossible with you. You love us, and you invite us into a new relationship with you when we are at our worst, that we are not beyond your reach of redemption. So, Lord, just pour out your spirit on us. We pray for Donnie as he is serving our nation, and so many who are, but right now as he is working And going through these final weeks of basic training in the Marines, that you will just anoint him and protect him, that you will give him all that he needs to endure and to succeed. We thank you for the buyers and their faithfulness and training, and we pray for their protection as they await their deployment and blessing on their families. Lord, we pray for all those who um, are grieving today. We thank the Phyllis Curtis family, and we know that she's a good friend of Dave Taylor's, and we just pray for them, for their comfort and hope. We pray right now that you surround Alan and that you will continue to carry him through to successful surgery this week. And as Dr. Franza, that you will just bless him and give him the will and the knowledge and the skill that he has to use that for Alan's healing. We just pray for others that are dealing with infections and weird events that continue to happen, like Jan's nephew, that you'll heal him and bless them as they're helping him recover, and others that are dealing with these kind of long-term health problems, that they'll feel your influence of love in their lives today. Lord, just guide us and give us the the ability to love and, and to love truthfully, not just pretending, but to love honestly and authentically, to change our world for good, and to help us to bring hope and love into this dark and hurting and society that we so live in, as, as the world has always been. And so, Lord, just help us to know that love and know that peace in new ways this day. We bring all these things and our unspoken concerns to you Uh, through your Son, Jesus, as we continue praying together the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is a kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So if you're partaking at home, or you have one of our individual little cups, just wait till after I bless the elements, and then you can partake with us as as you all are coming down uh, to be served.
Friends, on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread and he gave thanks to the Father for it and he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat of this all of you. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after they had supped, he took the cup and he gave thanks to the Father for it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and drink of this all of you. For this cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink this in remembrance of me. So as often as we eat this bread, in whatever form it may present itself, in a wafer, in a cracker at home, in a cube here with us, as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, and again, in whatever form it may present itself to us today, we are proclaiming the Lord's death and resurrection until he comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Truly, friends, God is good to us. And we are his people who he loves. This proves his love for us. Let us pray. Loving and gracious Heavenly Father, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and online and on these gifts of bread and juice. May they be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for this hurting world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. O oh Lord, make us influencers of hope and love, of joy and peace and light. Let us this Advent season be beacons of power and transformation in our world. O oh Lord, fill us anew as we gather at your table that we can serve you faithfully. We praise you, O oh Lord, and thank you for this opportunity. We ask that you just help us to be all that we can be, knowing that as we gather, we are one in Christ and one with each other in ministry to all the world until Christ comes again in his final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Truly, all glory and honor is yours now and forever, Almighty Father. And we praise you and come to you always through the name of your Son, Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. We'll invite you to come forward and the ushers will assist you as you come to be served.
Let's pray together. We thank you that you meet us, O oh Lord, in all sorts of places, but you especially meet us at your table. Fill us anew that we, through our abundance of living in your love and grace, can live faithfully and can attend to your business as your people. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together as we prepare to depart and sing our closing praise. Oh, come all you faithful. We'll just doing two verses. This week, think of Joseph, his faithful attentiveness to our great God, his love, and his perseverance in challenges. And you go forth and follow that example. Be an influencer for hope and love in your life and in our world. Because our great God is the God of love. He is love. And our great God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, friends, is with you and goes with you every step of the journey. Let us depart in peace. Amen. Amen.